This is a story set in the year 2040, which means it's about the future. In this future, eight scientists are sent to the planet Mars for research, and this was the first mission sent from Earth to find out if life was ever possible there. People have been here for six months now. Now, they have to stay here for just one more day before they can return to Earth. In a rover, Vincent and his companions were sitting, heading to pick up a biologist. However, a massive dust storm suddenly arrived. But these people were safe because the rover was designed to protect them from such storms. They emerged from the storm and reached their biologist, who was examining soil samples, but she couldn't find anything. She was quite angry that they had been doing research here for six months. They have been working so hard, but they haven't found anything yet. In the midst of all this, a message comes to them from the base station, which was built all around Mars. The message says that they will be sending a spaceship to pick them up shortly, so everyone should prepare. But one scientist here, named Marco, tells his captain that he wants to go outside, to which the captain asks why he wants to go outside now, especially when the mission has been terminated, and they haven't found anything here. Marco responds by saying that he had placed a device at Site 9 on Mars that's not working, and he wants to go and fix it. This surprises the captain, who wonders what he intends to do after fixing the device. Nevertheless, he agrees, but on the condition that he takes a teammate with him and returns before nightfall. They were about to leave when Vincent, his companions, and the biologist arrived. The three of them tried to talk to Marco, who insisted that he was running out of time and needed to fix the device quickly. This statement surprised everyone as they found it odd that Marco was in such a hurry to fix a single device. They became suspicious. Therefore, the biologist checked Marco's computer and discovered something that left everyone astounded. Marco had found live forms at Site 9, meaning some living samples that indicated the possibility of life there. Upon seeing this, everyone was left in shock, wondering why Marco didn't inform them about this and instead used the device repair as an excuse. Then, after some more conversation, they realized that Marco wants to take all the credit for this discovery. That's why he rushed out so quickly. Upon learning this, the captain calls Marco's rover, and Marco's companion answers the phone as he was inside, while Marco was still testing at the site. He takes a sample of soil, and indeed, it contains substances that suggest the possibility of life. Marco is overjoyed with his success and is about to share this news with his companion when suddenly, the ground beneath him collapses, and he falls into a large hole, which they had dug themselves with a drill. Seeing this, his companion becomes quite alarmed. He quickly rushes out and informs their base about the incident. A short while later, the captain arrives at the scene with one of his teammates, who happened to be a doctor. Since she was quite close to Marco, she gets angry with his companion, asking why they didn't do anything to prevent him from falling. She tells the captain that they need to go down quickly to rescue Marco. The captain, however, responds by saying that the hole is quite deep, and he doesn't think Marco will survive such a fall from that height. Moreover, they don't have any arrangements in place to go down there safely. The captain decides to return to their base first, and then head to the station before going back to the hole to rescue Marco. The doctor offers to stay behind, believing that by the time they return, it might be too late, so she will attempt to descend into the hole on her own. The captain agrees, and he and Marco's companion return to the base. They inform the locals and the station about the situation. The station instructs them to take their tools and attempt to locate Marco. If he's found alive, great. If he's deceased, bring back the body. Then they can present the discovery of the life forms Marco found to the world. Marco's companion and the biologist stay at the base, while the captain, along with the rest of the team, returns to the hole. The doctor tries to peer into the hole, but the thick, steam-like vapor makes it impossible to see. She retreats to the rover. Just then, they hear sounds from outside as if someone is trying to get inside the rover. The doctor goes outside to check and when she sees something, she is first quite startled and then screams loudly. What she saw is not revealed to us. Just then, the captain and the others arrive. The captain and Vincent begin looking inside the hole, while the other two scientists remain in the rover to help the doctor. However, after thoroughly searching the rover, they can't find the doctor anywhere. They then assume that she must have somehow gone into the hole to rescue Marco. Subsequently, they begin to lower Vincent into the hole using a rope. Inside the hole, Vincent encounters something strange, a living bacteria growing rapidly on the rocks. This surprises Vincent, but he doesn't pay it much attention and continues his search for Marco and the doctor. However, he can't find them anywhere, so he returns to the surface. At this point, their pilot informs them that they've noticed footprints heading in the direction of their base. The captain is quite surprised since, aside from Marco and the doctor, there shouldn't have been anyone else around. The footprints are most likely theirs. But if Marco had survived and the doctor had rescued him, why didn't they return to the rover? Why were they on foot? 
The base alerts them that someone is approaching their base. In the base, the remaining crew members investigate and are under the impression that one of their teammates is approaching. Marco's companion opens the door and, when he sees Marco through the glass, he lets him inside. However, Marco's condition looks alarming. His face has turned black, his skin is bizarre, and he looks nothing like a human anymore. This terrifies his companion who quickly removes Marco's helmet. Marco's horrifying appearance shocks him, and he loses control. Marco grabs a drill machine and attacks his companion, causing severe injuries. Despite this, he manages to trigger a security alarm. Hearing the alarm, the biologist comes to check what has happened, but just then, the doctor, who had come with Marco's companion, arrives in the same condition. She loses control and attacks the biologist, but the biologist pushes her away, keeping herself safe. She manages to lock both of them in a room. It becomes clear that the footprints belong to these two, but no one could have anticipated their transformation. The captain and his team arrive, and upon hearing strange noises from inside the base, they get alarmed. They ask their team members to stay outside while they enter the base to investigate. They are shocked to find blood spread everywhere. The biologist stands outside the room where she locked the transformed Marco and Doctor. The captain is baffled by the situation, wondering what has happened to them. However, the biologist insists that they must leave quickly, as staying there is now very dangerous. The biologist manages to get out of the base, but when the captain was about to leave, Marco suddenly emerges from inside and attacks the captain. Despite being injured, the captain and the biologist somehow manage to escape and make it outside. They are severely wounded, and the captain and the biologist inform the others about Marco and the doctor, but no one believes them. When they see the condition of Marco and the doctor for themselves, they become frightened. However, since the captain is injured, they quickly take him to another base, and Vincent's companion, who is a doctor, begins treating him. The captain explains that his condition is deteriorating, and he's forgetting things. He also feels extremely thirsty. Hearing this, the pilot tries to give him water, but the captain suddenly loses control and grabs the pilot by the throat, refusing to let go. This indicates that he is also becoming like Marco and the doctor, infected by the bacteria they found in the hole. Anyone attacked or bitten by Marco would become infected, and the virus would take over. This means that when Marco bit the doctor, she also became like him, falling prey to the virus. The others are trying to free the pilot from the captain's grip, but in the process, the captain dies. Realizing how dangerous the virus is, the biologist restrains the captain's hands and feet because she has come to understand that even a dead person can return to life and potentially harm the others once infected by the virus. Then, they all watch the screen and see that the base where Marco and the doctor were locked has broken open. If nothing is done, they will eventually make their way to this base as well. Vincent comes up with an idea. He suggests going through an underground pipe to get to the first chamber of their base since it is likely less dangerous than the surface. He plans to operate the system from there and then contact their station to explain the situation so they can send help. The others agree with this plan, so Vincent sets off for the underground chamber. Meanwhile, the doctor takes a sample of Captain's blood to check what is happening. The test reveals that everything is due to the life form that Marco found at Site 9, which was growing and evolving inside of them. The virus's main root was the life form, which had become so dangerous that it started infecting them. It first takes control of human thoughts, erasing memories, and then fully hijacks the brain. Since humans are creatures of the Earth and acclimated to the environment here, the virus can control them to this extent. These individuals then work diligently to modify the virus into an antidote, and they administer it to the captain for testing. They quickly realize it is effective because the process of the virus doubling in the captain's cells has ceased. This brings them some relief. Vincent had reached the chamber where he intended to restore and use the system to send a message to the station. However, just as he was about to turn the system back on, the lights began to flicker and then went out, causing the system to halt before it could be reactivated. Upon seeing the situation outside, Vincent realizes that the person Marco attacked with the drill has also become infected with the virus. This person, now controlled by the virus, was damaging the main system. As soon as Marco spots Vincent, he begins running towards him. The doctor and Marco also follow suit. Vincent's life is in danger, and his teammates shout for him, causing him to return to the door of their chamber, just in time for the biologist to spray the antidote through a glass hole, making them all temporarily weaker. Vincent then returns through the pipe to the chamber. Marco's companion was following Vincent, and to save all their lives, the biologist successfully diverts the attention of the infected person toward her, allowing them to escape. However, the pilot's companion, who was at the gate, believed that the biologist stayed behind because she had become infected. 
Therefore, he locks Vincent and his companion out and confines the biologist with Marco's infected companion. These three are trapped in the chamber as they continue to be chased by the infected Marco. Vincent manages to bring his companion to the rover and administers an injection to keep him safe. Now, they remember that the power in the rover they're using is running low. They spot another rover with power on the sidelines and decide to head in that direction. In the meantime, they notice that their infected companions are still following them. This indicates that the antidote they administered only temporarily halted the virus's effects and didn't completely eradicate it. As they reach the sidelines, Vincent and his companion stop while the pilot proceeds to the other rover. He tells Vincent that his companion is infected and he cannot risk taking him into the rover. If Vincent wants to come with him to the place where they are boarding the spaceship, he will have to leave his companion behind. Vincent refuses to abandon his companion, and despite his anger over the pilot's actions, he continues on in the same rover with his companion. As they move forward, another storm approaches, and since it is nighttime, they decide to rest where they are. When Vincent woke up in the morning, he saw that his companion had disembarked from the rover, leaving him alone. She had realized that Vincent was also infected, and she wanted to distance herself to prevent any harm to him. She intended to walk away and end her own life, but tracking the footprints, Vincent left the rover and started running after her. After a while, he caught up to her. Vincent tried to stop her, but she took off her helmet, causing herself intense suffering. Despite Vincent's best efforts to save her, she eventually broke free from his grasp, which was extremely painful for him. In the next moment, she, now infected, woke up and attacked Vincent. Against his will, Vincent attacks his companion with her own helmet, causing her to die. By that time, a ship from the main station had arrived to pick them up, and Vincent had seen it from a distance. He also noticed that one of his companions had become infected. The pilot, along with the rover, reached the ship. Vincent tried to signal them, but his voice and gestures went unnoticed by the people on the ship. Vincent could hear their voices through the ship's transmitter, but his voice wasn't reaching them. The ship had two people on board. Seeing the ship approach, the three infected companions started moving in that direction. The ship's crew saw them approaching, and they opened the ship's door, believing them to be survivors. However, the infected individuals attacked the ship's crew, and Vincent could only hear their screams as he approached the ship. Upon reaching the she, Vincent now sees Marco on the ship, and since he was the first to be infected by the virus, his condition is extremely dire. His body is mostly skeletal, with just bones visible. Vincent boards the ship. When he reaches the pilot's cabin, he finds that the pilot, who was already there, has also become infected. Vincent tells the pilot that he can't come with him because they can't bring the virus back to Earth, just like Vincent couldn't bring his companion. However, the pilot insists on returning to Earth to find a cure for the virus. Vincent tries to stop him, and they get into a struggle. In this fight, the pilot attacks Vincent with a knife, rendering him unconscious. The pilot starts the spaceship and heads back toward Earth. Vincent regains consciousness just in time and tries to stop him. He approaches from behind, and they engage in a struggle. Vincent manages to wound the pilot with his helmet and throws him out of the ship. But now, there's only a few minutes of fuel left in the ship. After that, Vincent starts sending a message to the main station, expressing his deep regret as he reveals that their entire team has perished due to a virus that originated from a life form and then spread throughout the team. He explains that the ship has only a few minutes of fuel left, but there is an abundance of food. Vincent is willing to wait until they come to rescue him. Vincent has made a heartfelt decision not to be rescued, believing that the virus has infected him and fearing that the antidote they created is only temporary. He doesn't want to risk spreading the virus to Earth, and he doesn't want to be a threat to others. So, he chooses to face his end alone, sitting in the ship, reflecting on his life and the time he spent with his team. The movie concludes with Vincent in solitude, accepting his fate. How did you like this story? Please let us know by commenting. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.